Welcome to the Wagas Innovation Talks. This podcast offers you an insight into recent innovations in the tech business, driven by research and industry insight. We are talking to researchers and professionals to share their expertise, experience and projects with us. As a think tank and accelerator, we support tech startups and corporations in growing their business. We believe innovation is key to growth and hope to shine light on academic research and experts with real-life industry experience. To learn more, visit wargasminusgroup.com and find all our podcast episodes plus articles and resources to expand your horizon on tech innovations. I'm your host, Livia van Herde, Marketing and Sales Manager at Wagas, and today I am joined by Gilbert Réveillon. Gilbert Réveillon graduated from HEC Montreal and is an Associate Professor at Institute Mainz Telecom, where he created the Innovation Management and Entrepreneurship Master's degree. He has occupied international commercial and marketing management positions at the Royal Bank of Canada and at Evian of Danone Group in Canada dealing with USA and Canadian corporate accounts. As marketing director at Eurostar in London, he was part of the historical launch of the Eurostar TGV. He then held the position of managing director of OSS and Virgin Group before returning back to France for Europe Car International. He is dealing with ICT and digital economy startups now, enhancing his great expertise in CRM, social CRM and mode of payments for 10 years at La Serre, which is part of BNP Paribas and Galerie Lafayette Group. Today he is the CEO of Mobile Louvre, which is specializing in social networks in the USA, UK and China, and he accompanies several startups doing international business such as Citizen. He received two innovation awards at the CES Las Vegas in 2014 and 2015. Welcome Gilbert, we're so happy to have you on the podcast today. Thank you. Delighted to be here as well. So this podcast is all about innovation in business and science in the tech industry. So I'm very thrilled to hear about your expertise in this field. And um, earlier today, I was wondering what the definition of innovation is. Um, so I looked it up on the Cambridge Dictionary. <laughs> and it said that it is a new idea or a method or the use of new ideas and uh, methods. So now, not every new idea is a good idea, right? So what do you think? What defines a killer innovation? Well, it goes a bit beyond that great uh, definition from a um, most yeah. outstanding prestigious uh, <laughs> school in, in, in the UK. For me, there are several, several uh, steps to go from one idea to research and development Within research and development, there is the fundamental research and there is the short-term development research. And obviously, it goes up to innovation. And what makes the big difference is that innovation is a product that will be put or a mm -hmm. service or a method that will be put in the market that will kick off, that will trigger right. demand within less than two years. The threshold is really two years to make sure that there is a, a buildup of the demand from a proof of concept to a prototyping and then go up to uh, early adopters and then move into mass production. This is definitely by far for me the most compelling mm -hmm. uh, definition of innovation. Something new that meets a demand needs satisfactory right. with a market willing to pay. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is willing to pay. <laughs> and once you get the cash in the bank account, <laughs> then the innovation, then the innovation is an innovation. Uh, let me give you, uh, mm -hmm. for me, what is one of the best examples over the last 15 to 20 years is definitely by far the most compelling story mm -hmm. of innovation with the Apple products that moved up to today being the Apple 12, which was already an amazing product, Apple 12 iPhone to now the Apple sell the chip that is put into the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, I bought it, the M1, is just an amazing innovation. It is truly disruptive. It is something that enhances at least two or three years leadership 
for the others, followers, to catch up. Because when you try the Apple yeah. MacBook Air M1, my God, you discover <laughs> the speed at which it goes. And press worldwide has been thrilled right, right. by this disruptive yeah. innovation. It's not just a killer app or a killer innovation. It is really disruptive in the way you work, in the way you apprehend the uh, fulfillment of the needs that we have when we work to have a product like a computer, yeah, yeah, a pebble yeah. to you click it, you get it. This is for me the definition of innovation. So meeting the demand and uh, right. in in threshold of less than Amazing. two years. That's for me the definition. <laughs> so it was a bit longer than the Oxford or Cambridge. Well, that definition. was a great definition. Um, so. What do you say is one of the biggest mistakes that organizations make when it comes to innovation? Well, there are many mistakes, but the top one, uh, the top mm -hmm. mistake is to misunderstand the competition and misunderstand and mis undertake mm -hmm. the competition monitoring. You have to identify yourself and position yourself against the state of the art, but not the claimed state of the art that any company in any country, any government will say, mm -hmm. this is the world champion. This, is, this has no value because it has to be definitely encompassing a worldwide screening, a very tough competition monitoring. And definitely then you can come up with a state of the art worldwide leadership. This is for me, one of the major mistakes is really not to understand what is behind that competition monitoring, what is behind the state of the art. That's one side, and that's the beautiful side mm -hmm. of the uh, bracket of the mistakes that quite often ap appears. The other one, <laughs> we call it in French, la fleur au fusil, which means you go fighting with a flower in the gun, you know, and then you don't understand that actually mm -hmm. the mistakes is cyber security. How can I be secure? How can I control? How can I prevent the organization yeah. from getting attacks, getting discovering 240 days later that someone has been cracking through your data and has access to all your systems and could kill someone or could break, hijack a Tesla in less than 15 seconds, uh, break a an aircraft, a fighter F-15 from mm -hmm. the uh, Lockheed Martin company in the US and makes three minutes for hackers to go through it. So these are the main mistakes. Lack of competition monitoring to really identify the state of the art as a worldwide mm -hmm. base, whereby the technology today has a life cycle of a couple of mm -hmm. years. That was 10 years ago, a couple of months. This is better now to understand that, yes, it yeah. takes a couple of months to get newcomers getting away in with these uh, disruptive innovations from mm -hmm. an ecosystem, an environment that you didn't know that they will compete with you and they are competing with you. So competition monitoring is key with, again, a strong understanding on how to secure your data, to secure your organization, to secure your processes up to brand protection, brand equity, but obviously intellectual mm -hmm. property. How do you protect your intellectual property? Uh, that are mm -hmm. the major mistakes for me at the top of the pyramid uh, that um, really needs care and governance, not just management, but governance, making sure you apply the right processes and you have the right details at the right time, at the right place to overcome these obstacles of lack of competition monitoring with the right cycle of um, uh, live data is getting mm. more and more important to manage and to discover. But you don't need to be overwhelmed by live data. You have to understand which are the ones that are critical to you. And one of the most critical are cybersecurity uh, data. Mm -hmm. And that's where quantum computing will help uh, to do in what, even if it, today, quantum computing is not the yeah. universal solution or universal computer. Already today, 
Google and a few others, have, and D-Wave in Canada has demonstrated that they can achieve in a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes, what will take mm -hmm. 10, 20,000 years to uh, achieve mm -hmm. with a supercalculator, supercomputer. Obviously, it will be a very narrow task, a very specific question to answer, but it will be dealt with in 15 to 12 mm -hmm. microseconds instead of 10,000 years. So that's all the mistakes. Understanding these mm -hmm. two uh, sides of the same coin, which is a, a beautiful face of a mistake. Because you learn from your mistake. You learn. You are entitled to do mistakes as long as you don't do twice the same mistake. Because then it become a drama. You see, if it's just one mistake and you don't do it again, then you will learn from that mistake and you will become stronger. So, so that's why I spoke about the beautiful face of mistakes. It has a value if you know mm -hmm. how to capture that mistake, understand right. that mistake and leverage that's by beautifully learning put. from these mistakes. So um, this might relate to this. So what is your advice? How can organizations get over the fear of failure? Well, the, the fear of failure, again, could have a good pressure, a positive pressure, putting, mm -hmm. putting the right tense at the right place at the right time with the right people to find mm -hmm. the right solution. Mm -hmm. So it's not that bad to have a fear of failure because it, it helped to transcend some results, some teamwork. But for me, the way to overcome that mm -hmm. failure and that fear is simply to work within an ecosystem. The stronger mm -hmm. the ecosystem, the stronger the components of these ecosystems. But there, the main ingredient in these ecosystems is diversity. If we're all of us made yeah. of the same gender, the same background, the same yeah, age, yeah. Uh, doesn't work. We need to get right. diversification. So do, a diversified portfolio of actors, being mm -hmm. organizations, mm -hmm. being individuals, being mm -hmm. ecosystems themselves, because you can have a meta ecosystem. But by working within a ecosystem, then definitely you improve and you overcome these fears of uh, failure. Because within the mm -hmm. ecosystem, what is very important, again, you come back to it, is the competition monitoring to empower, mm -hmm. to empower a positioning a strategic position. Mm -hmm. How do you position, position your product, your value proposition against others? And this competition monitoring has provided you with the state of the, heart, of the heart worldwide. And usually you don't cope, you don't encompass the full scope of this competition monitoring by your own. You have to have a team, you have to have an ecosystem mm -hmm. of diversified skills, diversified organizations, Within that ecosystem, yeah. such as Vagas, for instance, uh, you get empowered positioning. And with a strong yeah. positioning, then you can aim at the target and achieve what you were looking for as a performance. And you improve dramatically the level of performance if you work within an ecosystem that matches your um, complementary, your diversification processes. You increase the, the, the performance and you reduce the risks. That's mm -hmm. my, my advice and the way I like to work is within ecosystems and you get off the fear of failure. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Now, my next question would be how can you share effective knowledge across distance to generate innovation? What do you say? First of all, again, I come back to it, is teamwork. Teamwork by you need to identify state-of-the-art mm -hmm. technology, mm -hmm. processes, value propositions. These state-of-the-art are not the one that you are claiming, but truly the one you are facing yeah. and the one you want to engage into. So then you need to challenge these state-of-the-art. Once you have identified players with high level of performance, you decide if you can play in that gameplay. Mm -hmm. Is the gameplay the right positioning for me. Mm -hmm. Is it too strong? Do I need too much money or funding to play as a game player? Or can I change the rules of the gameplay? Mm -hmm. And then you become a game changer. Right. <laughs> that comes back by challenging these state-of-the-art achievements 
you become the killer app. Yeah. You become the yeah. disruptive innovator because you're a game changer. So how you, then you can obviously uh, sharing knowledge by sharing mm -hmm. <laughs> and sharing objectively, sharing with a true authenticity, a true proof yeah. of origin, such as blockchain. If you use a technology such as blockchain, mm -hmm. the sharing processes, the decision-making processes are getting authentified, identified from the origin and follow through all the life cycle of any kind of product and processes. Mm -hmm. So sharing today has, uh, is enjoying these new experiences that we can deliver with blockchains. Mm -hmm. So many technologies are key to what happened today. Uh, but ultimately, this sharing of knowledge is triggered by delivering mm -hmm. delivery stage, the delivery, the capability to deliver in a timed manner innovation. It's not just good to deliver, but if you are too early in delivering a too much disruptive innovation, mm -hmm. Nobody will follow you. Nobody will fund you and nobody will buy your product. Right. If you yeah. are too late, then you become a follower. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have any more cutting edge of being a leader. Mm. So the timed manner to deliver value propositions is highly critical and comes back again to a positioning strategy, a governance of resources, human resources, financial resources, organizational resources, within which an ecosystem, obviously. So that's a key element uh, to identify, to challenge, to share, and to deliver in a time manner mm -hmm. innovation. Mm -hmm. Right, and this brings us to the last question I have for you. Really? really? <laughs> what are the most important economic, cultural, and also social impacts in modern innovation? What do you think? Okay. So if, if we come back to my definition of what is innovation, mm -hmm. whereby a new product, it's a new value proposition, it's a new method of work, of thinking, of delivering, uh, then if you come back to that, for me, the most important thing is to create jobs. Mm -hmm. You create jobs for new generations of young, talented, gifted researchers, mm -hmm. developers, marketers, managing directors, but not just that scale. It goes up to any age where, uh, up to whatever age, 60, 70 yeah, years old, yeah. you can still be part of a team mm -hmm. and know how you can contribute to developing value, to create value and to developing value and to delivering value. Mm -hmm. uh, but today, and still again today, not only you create jobs, but you create jobs in targeted ecosystems, targeted territories. And what I say by ecosystems is the territories are not just in real life. Territories are becoming more and more into this digital transformation, digital transformation by which you have virtual life and real life. Mm -hmm. They all come up to one experience. And we have to take the best of both worlds. The real world with the physics, with the law of weight, <laughs> with the G, G being 9.81 meter per second of falling an object in the, our environment, and the best of virtual worlds by which you overcome distances, you overcome time frame, you overcome uh, scalability. You, you need to, bet, to take both of them. You will experience, obviously, the sads, the, the dark side of both environments. The real life has bad sides. Uh, like spreading viruses, which will be like COVID. And the wrong side of the virtual life, which also has viruses, which are hackings, which are data protection, which are cracked by hackers. So again, you have to take the best and be warned and learn from what is the worst uh, or the bad dark side or the bad, the dark and bad side of the virtual life. And this makes is a cursor between one, zero, and zero, and one. And that's why quantum computing helps us to be both at the same time, zero and one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if the uh, innovation meets the demand at the right time, it will spread fast yeah. within a sustainable environment. Mm -hmm. That's where I come back to the ultimate goal 
which is to improve our lifestyle, improve our well-being, our wealth of health, and not just digital wealth. And yeah. You know, the well-being is a mixture today of uh, achieving several goals. So economic, cultural, digital culture is getting more and more into uh, entertainment world, uh, pleasure world. Mm. We still need to make efforts <laughs> to be successful, successful in sports, but also in economics, but also in business. Mm. I still need to go and move to China and the US to meet my clients or to the UK. Right. So it, it's a it's not a, a one criteria. It's a formula with several variables, and decision making processes again has to make our environment sustainable and enjoyable throughout territories mm -hmm. uh, to share value creation, to share wealth created, and obviously respecting people, respecting products, respecting brands, mm -hmm. and most of the respecting organizations. And that makes a circle. Yeah. Um, that's it. That's my most important insight that I can deliver. In, in thank you. That's, that was great. Thank you. Well, thank you so Pleasure. much for your insight. Um, I've greatly enjoyed hearing your thoughts and I've learned a lot. <laughs> great experience. I didn't know this app. I didn't know this Zencast app. So you see, I've learned as well myself. And that's the beauty of life keeping learning all the time. Thank you so much. You can read more at wargasminusgroup.com. This has been your Innovation Talks podcast produced by Livia van Herde. Make sure to check back next month for the latest insight in innovation.